What's up guys? Learning with Rich here. In this video, we are going to continue our discussion about Revit 2025 for MEP design. So last video, I have shown you how to link your architectural project in your MEP project. And then after that, we also created levels using our architectural level as our reference. And then after that, we have turned off the architectural levels so that it only shows us the MEP levels. So what we are going to do now is we are going to create and apply a view template. So just to give you an idea what is a view template. So if I go to the view tab, so you can see here from the graphics, you can see view template. So what does it mean? So it says it creates, edits, or applies standardized settings to views. A view template is a collection of view properties such as view scale, discipline, detail level, and visibility settings that are common for a view type. So use the view templates to standardize settings for views in a project. Okay? So basically, if you have a view that is already set up like this one, so we have the South Dash Mac. Okay, so we already turned off the architectural level. So let's say, for example, in this view, I also want to turn off the, the parking. I, I also want to turn off this uh, planting here. I want to turn off the site topography okay, of my architectural model. So that is what I'm going to do. And after that, the settings of my South Dash Mac the view settings of my South Dash Mac, I also want that to be applied here on my North Dash Mac. Okay? So, for you to be able to understand what I'm trying to do, remember we already turned off the architectural level here. So this time, I'm going to turn off some of the elements in my architectural model. So to do that, I'm going to open, uh, open the visibility graphic overrides. So I'm going to type VV. So that is Victor Victor VV. So that is visibility graphic overrides. Or another way is you can also go to properties and then look for visibility graphic overrides and then click edit. Just make sure you don't have any objects selected. So make sure you escape twice. Okay, so that you don't have any object selected. So you go to properties and then click edit on your visibility graphics override. Or you can also type uh, VV. Okay, you can type VV. So that's the shortcut of visibility graphics override. So I'm going to select edit. And then after that, I want to modify my link model. So remember, if, for you to be able to modify the visibility of your link, you just need to go to Revit links. Revit links tab will not be available if you don't have any link in your project. Okay? And remember, visibility graphic overrides only apply to the current view, which is what? South Dash Mac. So any changes that we made here on our visibility graphic overrides, whether it be model, annotation, analytical model, imported categories, filters, or links, it will only apply on your South Dash Mac. Okay, so that's how visibility graphic overrides work. Okay, so let's go to Revit links and then make sure you click this custom here. So the reason why it becomes custom, if you remember last time when we turned off the level of our architecture we went to the custom we select here custom okay so custom and then after that let's select your annotation categories oh sorry not annotation at categories you, you go to annotation categories if you want to turn off annotation elements like levels right but let's say i want to turn off the visibility of my parking so let's go to model categories and make it custom and then let's look for the parking i do not want to have any elements that is under the category of parking i also don't want uh, planting as you can see i have uh, plantings here on my drawing or on my view so i don't want any planting also roads i don't like that 
sight, I don't like that, and topography. Okay, right, and topo solid. Okay, and then after that, I'm going to select OK, and then OK again, and then you will see. There you go. So it turns off now all the elements that I have unchecked from the visibility graphic overrides. Now, what I'm going to do is I want this settings of my view to be applied as well to my uh, north mechanical view. Okay, so from the project browser. So I want that also to be applied here on the north mechanical because as you can see, my north mechanical here have the architectural level, have the plantings, the topography, the site, the roads, planting. So I do not want that to appear in this view. Now, instead of me doing the same thing, like going to the visibility graphic overrides and then turn off the elements, turn off the levels, etc., etc. Instead of doing that, I'm just going to create a view template. Okay? So, I'm going to use my South Dash Mac view to create my view template. So, to do that, I'm going to right-click this and then after that, you can see this one. Create view template from view. Okay? So let's click that one and then we are going to create a view template. So let's say this is the view template for my MEP elevation. So that's the name of the view template. So I'm going to select here OK. So we are using the settings of our uh, South Dash Mac to create the view template. Take note that it also includes there the scale. The current scale of our South Dash Mac is 1 over 8 of an inch to 1 foot. And then the scale value is 96, which is funny, but that's fine. <laughs> okay, and then basically these are the settings of our South Dash Mac. And then we created a view template out of that setting, which is MEP elevation. So I'm just going to select here OK. Now, I'm going to open up the North Dash Mac and then I'm going to apply here the template and then see what will happen on my view here. So I'm going to right click this and then I'm going to apply template properties. So let's click that one and then let's look for the template that we have created. So let's select this one and then after that, let's select here OK. There you go. See? It's now cleaned up so it's the same setting now as our south dash mac so if i want that as well to be applied on east dash mac so i'll just right click that apply template properties and then select mep elevation and then select ok and there you go All right so you just need to of course fix the placement of your level because that one is not included to the visibility uh, to the view template so you still need to modify it like uh, manually so let's do that as well to our west so right click apply template properties west uh, mep elevation and then okay so view template is really powerful because you can use this to quickly set up the view okay now, after learning how to create and apply a view template, so the next thing that we are going to do is let us try to modify some uh, system settings in our uh, project. So let's say um, I'm going to create a new project. So let's create a new project. So new, and then I'll just use here a default template. I'll just use default uh, let's say I just use architectural. Okay, so let's use architectural template <clears throat> and then I'll select here OK. So in this exercise, we're going to ma modify the system settings so that at least you have an idea on how to control the system settings for Revit, uh, MEP or architectural or structural. So system settings are local to each computer, meaning any changes that you made on the system settings, it will only affect your computer it will not affect the other computer okay right so let us try to modify it so how to modify the system settings so let's say the general systems option so to do that so let's go to file 
And then let's go to options. So you can click options here. Okay. So you will now be able to see our options. Okay. So the first one is general. So here on the general, as you can see, there's a re save reminder interval. So the default here is 30 minutes. Okay. So if you click the, the, the drop down arrow, so you can see here different settings. Okay, so for me, only for me, I prefer no reminders because saving is always part of my system. So I always save. So that's why I don't want to have any dialog box popping up every 30 minutes or every uh, 1 hour or 15 minutes on my screen. Okay, I always save. But if you don't trust yourself, sometimes you forget to save your file. So maybe you can put it like every one hour every 15 minutes it's up to you every 15 minutes for example there will be a dialog box that will pop up on your screen just reminding you to save okay so same with same with your synchronized with central reminder interval okay if your project is shared project synchronized with the central reminder will pop up every let's say one hour if you set that one hour okay and then you can also specify here the journal file cleanup okay and what else of course you can also change here the user interface let's say for example i'm doing mep i do not need the structure tab Okay, so I can uncheck the structure tab here. I can just uncheck that whole structure tab. Okay. Alright. And let's say I don't use uh, massing inside. So I can just uncheck that uh, energy. I don't use that. For example, uh, root analysis. I don't use that. So I'll just uncheck. And then you will notice your tabs here will be um, hide, will be hidden. Like the massing energy root. Uh, structure it will be hidden here okay so if i select here okay look what will happen there you go so there's no structure anymore here there's no uh there's no analysis okay so let's go back again to the system option so options okay so another thing that you can do here is if you have time you can explore this um, you can go to the user interface and then you can check out also the keyboard shortcut. So you can customize that. Okay, so these are the shortcuts. The default shortcuts for this command. So you can create your own shortcut. Like for a, a select link, you can select that and then you can type here the shortcut that you want. Okay, so it's up to you. So you can customize your shortcut. And then after that, you can export that. After you export your keyboard shortcut, you can import that to another computer. Okay, so that all of you have a standardized shortcut. All right, so I'm going to cancel this one. So that's your keyboard shortcut. Double click options. Okay, so this one is also uh, another thing that you can modify. So there are some instances if you are just a new user there are some instances accidentally you double click an object so what happens if you double click an object for the family it will open up another window which is edit family window which sometimes confuses the user because they are not yet used to using revit okay so that's why usually i i deactivate edit family so i just select do nothing there so that even if I double click I accidentally an object or a family, it will not open up the family editor. Okay? So basically that is what will happen. Um, you can double click and sketch elements so you will be able to edit the element. So you can double click inside the view so it will activate the view. So double click outside the view, it will deactivate the view. If you double click an assembly, it will edit the element. If you double click the groups, it will edit the group. If you double click the stairs, it will edit that element. Okay? So if you do not want to have a double click action, so just select do nothing. 
there are other options for you to be able to uh, do these things here. Okay, so just select do nothing. Okay, but if you're already expert, of course, you just need to return it back because you know already what will happen. Okay, so maybe you can uh, edit family like that. So for the sheets here, so activate the view, activate the view if I double click and de deactivate if I double click outside. So that's how your customized double click settings uh, dialog box do, okay? Tooltip assistance, so by default here it's normal. So what does it do is, I select here, okay. Tooltip assistance is that when you hover your pointer to a tool, so there's the tooltip assistance, right? So it shows you the name, shows, uh, shows you the shortcut, and it also shows you a description, right? So that's the normal. So if I go back to my options, uh, user interface, tooltip assistant. So you can select none, minimal, normal, or high. So if I select high there, and then I select OK. So if I hover my pointer, at, it will show you quickly the, the information of the tool, right? So you hover your pointer, see, it shows you quickly, right? See, it shows you quickly. So if I select, let's say, uh, user interface, tooltip, uh, minimal, okay, so this is what happens. So it shows you only that part, okay, right? Only the definition and then the shortcut. So no more image and useful information regarding the tool. So that is minimal. So if you don't have to have, or if you don't want to have a tooltip, so you can select none. Okay, but for me, I'll just select normal. Okay. Okay, and another thing that you can do, again, if you have time, you can explore the other options. You, you can also go to colors. I think I already shown you before these colors here. So as you can see, my background here is black. So if you want that to be white, so just click that. So I click that background black, and then maybe you can change that to white or any other color that you want. Okay, and then selection is red, pre-selection is green. Okay, so these are the options that I want, and then I'll just select OK. There you go. Okay, so what else? So another thing that you can do is you can specify the file locations. Okay, so these settings control the locations of important Revit files, including your default project template, family template files, or library. Okay, so how to do that? Again, just go to the file. And then after that, you go to the options. And then let's, uh, let us specify the file location. So you can go to uh, file locations. And then these are the locations. So let me just adjust. So for my construction template, so that's the location of my template. Architectural location, structural location. Mechanical location, system location. So you can change that one. So by default, my location here is. Wonder if I can I, I can resize this. So I can't resize it anymore. So let's say I want to change my uh, systems template by uh, English unit. Okay. So I I'll click this one. And then you see there's a ellipsis button there. So you can click that button, and then I'm going to select here up one level. And then I just go to the English Imperial, double click, and then I look for systems default, which is in English unit or Imperial unit. So just double click that. So there you go. So it's now there. So every time I create a systems template, so it will always open up the English system. Okay. So same with the other uh, template here. So another thing that you can, uh, let me just quickly show you. So if I select here, okay, and if I create a new project, okay, if I select here systems template, as you can see right now, it's in metric system, right? So it's one is to 100. So if I select here systems template, 
and then if I select here, OK. So you can see that it's now in English or Imperial unit. Inches, feet, so that's the, the unit. Okay, so let me just go back again to that exercise. So another thing is that let's go to file location. You can also change here the default path user files, the default and also the family template files you can change that one again you can just select browse and then you can go to the folder where you want to uh, use <clears throat> or <clears throat> what folder do you want to set up your family template files okay so you can change the location all right, so that is for the specifying the file location. Again, you just explore this one. Then I'll just select here, okay. Okay, another thing that you can do there is you can also specify the snap settings of your project. Okay, the snap settings. So if I select here duct, if I click the duct, okay, and then if I click my first point, Oops, sorry. <clears throat> so maybe I'm going to create a new project using a mechanical template. So new project. Let's use a mechanical template. Okay. And I'm going to create a duck. Click duck. Okay, so I'm going to pick my first point. You see, every time I move, it's snapping on the angle, right? And then there's the distance. So right now it's by 100. So if I zoom out, so it's by 100, right? So if I zoom out more, so it will snap by 1000. See, every time I move. So you can change the settings of your snap. So what you can do is, let's go to modify let's go to manage and then after that additional settings oh not that one sorry where's my snap oh this one snaps so just click the snaps and here you go so as you can see this is the length dimension snap increments so it increments by five if it is close a little bit farther it becomes 20 farther more to 100 uh, farther more it becomes 1000 so that's the increment that your length dimension is snap so same with your angular dimension so every time you you move up your or down your duct it will snap at 1 degree 5 degree 15 45 90 of course you can always change that one and then you can just put your own one let me just cancel that let's go back again to snaps so that's your angular and then object snaps so these are the shortcut for object snaps okay so you have se sm sn se for endpoints sm for midpoints etc etc so that's the the shortcut okay so it's already checked so automatically it will snap okay and then there are some useful shortcuts that you have here right so you can just explore this so that's how you work on your uh, snaps so if you want to change your current unit okay so let me just close this one you want to change your unit so you can look for this one project units or the shortcut is un okay so un there you go so that's your project unit so you can change your settings here so the discipline here is common so these are the common units common units and then you you also have your separate units for electrical for energy hvac infrastructure piping structural okay so common so if you want to change your length to uh, inches just select inches and then okay all right, so that's how you modify the project units. Okay, select OK. 
Alright, so that's it for exploring some of the tools that we need to do or if you want to do when you start your project. So that's how you modify the system settings. And hopefully you learn something from this video. On our next uh, video, by the way, we are now going to uh, we are going to create a mechanical system. Okay, so thank you for watching, guys. Have a nice day.